John, initial reactions, obviously a really disappointing result in the end. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's uh, it's really tough. It's obviously very tough to be here too uh, after that one. Um, I left it all out there. I, you know, gave it a, I gave it a crack. John, are you surprised with what happened, the uh, emotions and the momentum you had with that saving that those four match points um, the way you did and how he was able to refocus in the fifth? Were you surprised how he was able to come back out and play like nothing had happened? Not really. He's a pretty professional player. He came back. I think similar thing happened when he played against Andy. He's a, you know, I mean, might have had a, a bit of a... Um, you know, he's a, he's a very good player. He, there's a reason why he won Doha and beat Djokovic and, and Burdich on the way, you know, to win that just a, a week, two weeks ago. Um, top player, very physical. Um, well, yeah, it's a tough match. Yeah. Do you take anything from fighting back and saving match points tonight? Yeah, not really. I, um, you know, I expect that of myself. I expect to, to, to you know... Just leave it all on the court. I, you know, I, I have high expectations of myself. I was pretty displeased with, you know, and, and credit to Roberto, he started off very well. I probably didn't start off so well. Um, quite different conditions. Um, obviously, came to Melbourne quite late, and and um, from Sydney, which was, you know, um, due to weather. You know, that's no one's fault, but came quite late, and you know, I had to prepare for. Um, you know, on the on the outside courts against Federico Del Bonis, and you know, I think they they're quite quite a fair bit bit, bit fair bit quicker. Um, it's quite slow out there tonight, and um, yeah, I think I, I probably struggled to to find my timing um, early on. Um, and credit to Roberto, he came out of the gates playing some great tennis, and uh, yeah, it took me a while to find my feet and and get used to, you know. Um, Probably d drastically different conditions. Did you have any issues with the balls tonight? A bit different. Um, oh, they're heavy, you know. But you know, that's uh, it's the same for everyone. Some people love them, some people don't like them. Um, I will say they're quite conditional, in my opinion. Um, I wouldn't. I would say they've got probably a bit more life here in Melbourne. I think because of the dry air. Um, look, I've had a couple of shoulder surgeries and and elbow problems, and you know, generally speaking when um, due to conditions, you know, sometimes I play in altitude, it blows up, or sometimes um, with certain balls, um, my shoulder and elbow blow up. Uh, look, it's, that's, that's me, it's personal, that's, you know, it's not the same for everyone, it's horses for courses, I'm very well aware of that. Um, you know, it's the same for everyone, but yeah, look, it's, it's a heavier ball. It's fine. I thought I played all right with them. So, yeah. John, as Australia's number two player, perhaps how, how do you see what's been going on with all the talk about Davis Cup and Leighton Hewitt? Yeah, look, um, I got given an opportunity to play Davis Cup. Uh, um, what was it in Belgium? What year was that? 2017, maybe? 16, 17? 2017. That's when I made my debut. I've been in and around that space, you know, for a couple of times before that. Um, you know, for me, playing Davis Cup is one of the greatest honours I could I could have. I love playing for my country. I love playing um, in the country's colours. And uh, look, I, I think that you know I've always felt actually quite well supported um, by the captain, by the by the coach, by the by the support staff, and um, you know I've had a uh, only positive experiences from it, um, you know. On the, you know, that's that's probably it. I, I love the opportunity to play. Oh yeah, um, <laughs> you s talked about your shoulder and um, yeah. blowing up heavy balls with a four-hour match tonight and the weather affecting yeah. you in Sydney last week. How are you physically overall? Given yeah, how look, punishing look, you look, to be fair, my body's pretty good. Um, you know, I've been getting treatment on my shoulder and elbow. Um, since Brisbane, um, so I'll continue to do so. I spoke to the physios just before coming here, saying that you know I'll need that. I'm getting old now. Um, look, there's nothing major. It's just all management, and and um, you know over this Aussie summer, I felt it just a, a bit more. But um, that's nothing to take away from the from the performances. I feel like I'm actually 
playing some of my best tennis actually. So, um, you know, I just got to manage my body through, you know, through this time. Just on the Davis Cup again, John. We, yep. Were you aware that any other players have any other issues? Like, I mean, did the Bernard Tomic um, comments take you by surprise? Look, I, I, to be honest with you, I. I get along fine with Bernie. He's a Queenslander. You know, he's a bit of a laugh at times, a um, bit of a larrikin. Um, but it, not really. You know, when I get in, when, when we get in camp, it's just all about getting the win. You know, and and uh, I, I think probably the selections, you know, on the whole, have been pretty justified. You know, if I speak personally from way back in. In Belgium, you know, I was the last... I've answered these questions, to be honest with you. No one was at my first press conference. I was, I was in the small one with, with two people. So I'll answer them again, but... Um, I was in Belgium. That's when I made my debut. Um, I was the last person standing the tournament before, which was the US Open. Um, and I thought I was playing, you know, as good as anyone there. So I thought I... I've deserved my spot. I've deserved my number, um, and it's the it's the greatest honor you can have. And you've got to get runs on the board too, a little bit too, you know. Like yeah. um, right now, I'm number two in the country, um, so I believe I, I should be in and around that space. And I think you know, if, if we go back, I, I think everyone's probably. I think you could justify every selection that's been made, but. Um, for me personally, I, I love playing for the country. I, well, to be honest with you, I look at the schedule uh, at the start of the year and I earmark which weeks the Davis Cup. And I was very dis- I was, you know, if you if you look back in the in the press um, back, I was very vocal against the changes to be made Davis Cup because, you know, I love it. And a lot of some people, some of the tennis players, you know, in the world were saying that you know we need to reduce the schedule and all this. You know, and that's why we shorten the format with Davis Cup. But you know, for me, I, I love those four weeks. So when I see the Davis Cup weeks, I look at that as my schedule. We had a great training camp up in Brizzy. Um, you know, and and I love it. And um, you know, as a as a collective and and the the people involved, you know, I think they've pushed me, and I've, I'm playing some career best tennis right now. And and you know, they're a bit of a part to play in that too. Would you like to see Nick and Bernard back in the Davis Cup setup? Yeah, for sure. Um, look, um, um, Bernie, you know, he was off in the jungle for a bit there. So, uh, um, you know, like I said, I've got no problems with Bernie. And Nick, you know, I think um, I played fast forward with Nick just the other day. And, um, you know, I, I actually really like Nick. I think he's a top bloke. I think um, Sometimes we go a bit hard on him when you don't see what he's doing off the court. He's got his own charity. That's more than me, to be honest with you. You know, I try to, um, you know, be a good Samaritan, whatever. But, you know, Nick's used his stature and managed to have the NK Foundation, which I think is fantastic. And, you know, I think sometimes we forget about those things when we're, uh, you know, when we're just having a go at performances. John, given your form, like with the US Open, and yeah. um, and you said you're sort of in career best form, do, yeah. is, is there a sense of dis? I mean, obviously it's disappointing. It's yeah. difficult difficult to go deep into a draw, but do you sort of feel like maybe it's a missed opportunity? Um, yeah, 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 definitely. I feel like um, you know, I want to nothing more than go for a run here at the Australian Open. Um, US Open gave me a taste for that to go really deep, um, but. <laughs> You know, tennis rolls around Australia for one month every year, you know, and and, uh, and if you don't have your finger on the pulse, we, we, we kind of forget just how strong... And, you know, I can only comment for men's tennis right now just because that's what I'm involved in and that's no... Uh, you know, actually, I, I love seeing Kim and, and Ash, who train in Brisbane, do so well today. That was awesome. But just commenting on men's tennis right now, uh, I think it, uh, in Australia it's quite easy to forget just... Um, because we only are exposed to tennis for three, four weeks in the whole year, and we're playing, you know, 40 weeks a year, um, we forget just how many countries are competitive in it, just how many players are competitive in it, um, and we forget just how strong tennis is right now. I mean, it is incredibly strong. Um, and it's partly my fault. I missed out by seeding by a couple of spots, and, and that would actually, you know, I'd be playing Roberto... Um, battling away maybe in a third round. And I do think I was a little bit unlucky to come up against a guy, you know, there's only been four guys who have won a, a lead in tournament um, um, 
you know, I beat one actually in Brisbane who ended up winning Auckland. Um, and there's only three other guys, and, and I've played another one in the second round of the Australian Open. So that's partly my fault. I've got to get my ranking just a little bit higher so I can avoid, you know, some of those types of players. Um, but, yeah, definitely missed opportunity a little bit because I feel like I'm playing some really good tennis. But, yeah, I think we forget sometimes too just how um, just how strong tennis is. It's a, it's a worldwide game. Um, you know, we're competing against, uh, in my opinion, some of the best athletes in the world. Uh, and it's one of the it's one of the most played sports in the world. And that's that's just facts. So, um, you know, we forget that a little bit because, you know, we uh, and, that, and I would love to play more in Australia. I'd love to have more tournaments here in Australia, but we only get this one month and then, you know, we're off for I mean, we only touch base again, probably at the at the Grand Slams. But in the meantime, there's there's a lot of you know there's a, a lot of people that are you know kicking down doors and playing some really good stuff. Yep. Just given that the window is quite brief in Australia, yep. do you find it disappointing that coaches and players are sniping at each other in the media and social media? Yeah. Look. Um, yeah. To be honest with you, I don't really pay much attention to it. I just try to play tennis I've always kept tennis and my social life quite private you know I um big believer in that if you looked up at my box today a lot of the people are actually people that have nothing to do with tennis they've just been great mates of mine from school that have um just come on the roller coaster ride with me you know so kind of keep it pretty private and and um obviously you, you see a bit on social media but I mean the stuff that goes on social media right now with with you know the I don't know the some of the comments made. I mean, to be honest with you, that's easy stuff. I mean, it's the other stuff on social media that I try to avoid, the death threats and stuff. So that's the that's the ones that I try to avoid. So this stuff is just you know it's in one ear out the other. The other stuff you try to ignore a little bit more.